Hello, hello. Today uh, we're going to start a very exciting series called Make Sense because the person that I've conceptualized this series and will be hosting this series with, Artika, who's the founder of uh, Team Taradi, is uh, Taradi Foundation. <laughs> Team Tarani is their Instagram, is uh, someone with whom, you know, all our conversations sort of go, uh, like, make sense, right? And and uh, we align on so many things and we've really, uh, despite all of that, right, we've really been challenging each other to add nuance to the conversation. And uh, we sort of, like, I mean, as much as we say make sense to each other, we also really hold each other accountable and look to each other for guidance. So, um Oh my God, she's here. I'm going to quickly add Artika. Welcome to the follower. Really appreciate you. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm well, I'm well. Did you hear your really amazing I stuff? was. I was just going to say thank you for that. <laughs> so hi everyone, I'm Artika from Tarini Foundation. And yes, so yeah, please continue up, Rupa. No, I'd love to. I'd love to also hear from you, Artika, as to why we're calling this makes sense. I'll, I'll give my interpretation. Yeah, I mean, because we think we make sense. <laughs> Not Are sugarcoating you... it. Is that, is that what this is? Uh, okay, well, so firstly, yes, because we do think we make sense most of the times. And secondly, because we do want to open up this space for other people to come and tell us like if you're talking about something that's 100% or that's 90% how we feel about it and there might be some other opinion so we're really honestly really looking forward to other people adding their views as well so that we can <laughs> all sort of make sense of things together yeah um, yeah yeah make it make sense yeah make it make sense <laughs> And I think the other idea was that, um, you know, when, when as educators, when we, we both felt that when we were creating uh, posts or content or, you know, in whichever format, we were really like putting out inclusive information, information which was really theoretical. And then when we would read our own work, we'd be like, okay, um, does this make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fully admitted to each other as well that while so much of this is brilliant in theory, and it's very aspirational for us to want to practice like the content that we put yeah. out. It's not always possible, is it? And and sometimes it has nothing to do with us at all. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that's what we want to sort of address through this series. So it started off with um, something where we wanted to do three episodes covering one topic. And then we were like, okay, but you know, we will come across such discrepancies in our own work in the future mm. as well so like why not open up space for more of such conversations to happen mm. in the future as well mm. so yeah I think that's yeah. what I have to say about what we're trying to do absolutely and I think uh, it's, it's also pertinent for us to give a big shout out to our friend and colleague uh, Neha who's uh, at Indian Sex Therapist who posted about how you know, it's incredible that all our sex educators and mental health professionals and just like folks in this space, right? Even students who run like these brilliant pages. Uh, in fact, we'll have someone who will join us today in just yeah. a bit. Um, we're doing such important work of uh, spreading the right kind of message. And like, it, it's almost like you're trying to drown out the noise of like years and years of conditioning. And, and you're really trying to you know, put out information that is inclusive, uh, that allows for people to explore their own own selves, own sexual selves in a manner that is healthy and safe for them. But it's, it's so dichotomous sometimes, like what you see around you, um, your, maybe your own house, your own family, your own school, or, or maybe, you know, your own internalized feelings right. of and guilt around these topics and then what you know folks like us are, are trying to say on Instagram that is not to say that we stop doing what we're doing but how do we hold space for conversation which goes beyond okay these are the right words to use this is the woke thing to Absolutely. say um, what about people who are not there yet or people who think masturbation is a sin for instance right. uh, like what about what about those perspectives how do they uh, access pleasure and how can how can we still hold space for you know bodily autonomy and just like personhood 
for for those kinds of folks that we don't necessarily uh, agree with yeah um, i think i also want to like you know hear from you because you've done very important grassroots work and and you know at at uh, team tarini at tarini foundation need to stop calling you that <laughs> you all run uh, something which i mean really touched my heart when i heard about it project mahina can you tell us a little bit about it and can you talk about how you know i'm sure you face this right you go to these schools you go to these communities you talk about hey menstruation is normal it's just a part yeah. of life and there's no shame in it but that's not really what they're hearing at home right right so um talk with this and you know do you still feel like your work is meaningful I guess <laughs> uh when you would it that way no but definitely jokes aside whenever someone asks us we say we're doing exactly what we're doing online offline right like that's the most basic answer that I can sort of provide to someone in a in a 5 minute conversation but if we really sit and think about it then is it really the same i mean there is so much difference because whenever you put things uh, up online like we all do which is obviously a great platform to reach out to people but there is a certain understanding that okay this is the level till where people already have some understanding and this is where we can build on when you work in the field firstly this level is very different from one community to another mm-hmm. you know understanding is very different from one community to another cultures are very different which influence their understanding of things so obviously when we end up working in the field the same project doesn't even work for two communities which are which may be in like a 3 km radius from one mm-hmm. another mm-hmm. so it has to be kind of tailored for the needs of those community which means we have to live with them we have to sort of understand everything about them that may not have anything to do with menstruation or sex or reproduction or even health for that matter just really understand what they do every day how do they spend their time and then kind of go ahead and build a project but when we're working online like you know we were just discussing we sort of i would say assume that the level of understanding is at a certain place and then build from there because it's obviously very difficult if we start catering to each and every person's need really each and every person's needs um and i think that's where this series comes into uh, the picture also um, mm-hmm. and very simply speaking what <laughs> what we discussed when we got on a call about this was that the content we are creating is to remove the shame from you know whatever we are talking about but kuch cheeze aisi bhi hain jisse hum jisme hum kuch help nahi kar sakte right like we can talk about ki oh ye sahi hai ye galat hai and there is no shame in this but then there are some things which are even beyond our own control even beyond the control of the individual who you know may be subject to a certain situation and that's essentially what we want to use the space to talk about while also talking about the other things on our platforms as we do yeah. regularly yeah um thank you for like reminding me to talk in hindi <laughs> cuz it's a fierce series in english so i'm going to i'm going to attempt now um yeah. aur hum ye jante hain ki hum dono ke paas bahut privilege hai privilege of language privilege of space aur abhi hum thode bade ho chuke hain to hum apne apne haq ke liye lad bhi sakte hain and and like our you know for instance you and i our parents take us seriously which is not the case with so many young people right hum chahte the ki hum aise logo ko bhi conversation mein invite kare jinke paas wo same privileges shayad nahi hai ya fir alag tarike ke privileges hai and how does that play out into the whole politics of pleasure right, right. Uh, so uh, i think this is a good time artika to invite our special guest absolutely Okay so I'm going to quickly add them So his name is Kai and uh, yeah he's going to talk to us about jagah kahan hai boss aaj tether ki baatein to bahut badhiya hai par par jagah kahan hai uh, to to access pleasure and that's that's so important to talk about we often say ki privacy of your own home uh, own room own washroom but so many of us don't have that uh, absolutely that- and just sharing with the audience when aparupa and i were working on one of our last posts which was this activity book which we created oh hi hi, hi. how are you doing hi i'm good how are you guys we good. good to good uh, yeah welcome welcome to this space love the latest post y'all put up <laughs> yeah <King. laughs> thank you so much thank you for the support and love you guys are giving like safe space is really excited 
for that. <laughs> oh, we're so excited to have you. Yeah, yeah. Thank absolutely. you for having me here. Yes, absolutely. We're so glad you said yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I do just want to finish the thought about yeah. You know, Thing. Yeah. Yeah, I was just sharing with the audience that uh, the last time Aparupa and I did something, which was a workbook we created, right? And we were creating it, and we were very, very involved in creating it. And we really just wanted to put out the best activities. If if you are tuned in and you haven't seen it, you can find it on both the profiles. And um, you know, after we posted it, we said, okay, this is great. But is sab ke liye apko basic kya chahiye? Like ek cheez jo basic chahiye, which is space. And that's where this came from. That. the whole workbook is probably like useless to somebody who can't have access to that space like they may want to try out something they may want to explore something but jagah kahan hai so i think that's the, that was the birth of this entire thing so i have to acknowledge that yeah yeah so sky actually we'd love to hear from you um and and i i will ask you out of syllabus questions also <laughs> now now that that's start- fine <laughs> and now that i've seen your post like uh, some interesting thoughts have sort of come up but i'd love to know from you as to you know where are young people exploring their sexuality jagah hai kya for people to explore their uh, sexuality that's like uh, when we talk about space space is very political you know people create space people in power can create space you know minority communities or people queer people or you know and the privileged people they do not really have a space to explore themselves be it sexuality or be it pleasure so what uh, when we say young people i guess most of the exploration that we are doing is online this is the best resource that we have but then that itself is a privilege to be online to be able to access you know internet to be able to access english not everybody not everyone in this country is able to do that and especially children teenage the youth when we talk about teenagers of obviously like uh, high schoolers or middle schoolers and i'm pretty sure everybody like in teenage come becomes aware of themselves and starts exploring pleasure but then they you know attach stigma and shame with it yeah i'm yeah. sorry so, did you say something i'm just like very passionate about it <laughs> your body is literally producing sex hormones and you still want to exactly. paralyze that person so yeah just having feelings or desire right yeah i hear exactly. you like you your body is going through puberty hormones and you know excitement everything attraction you want to know about yourself but then there are this walls that the society has put up around us stigma and shame and you guilt around things be it sexuality or pleasure you cannot directly go and talk up to a trusted person and tell them that i want to explore this part of myself not your teachers not your parents probably not your siblings because you don't know how they will react to it and that there comes this you know like uh, societal tools you know of uh, how do i say weaponizing this uh, weaponizing religion and you know culture mm. like this is against what we believe in this is not how this is supposed to be female bodies are not supposed to you know talk about pleasure so many things come in come into play when we talk about pleasure and sexuality and exploration of it mm. and uh, me like i am in college right now and i'm about to turn 20 but then it was not very long back when i was in high school and when i was a high schooler i literally had no space no proper space where i could have explored myself it was just the internet yeah yeah and and it's so interesting that uh, you know aapka page be it's called safe spaces um and, and you talk about you know claiming that space and creating that space on the on the internet is that where it came from um yes our founder actually there's a very interesting story related to the creation of this page so uh, our founders they studied in a school uh, named dps obviously dps everybody knows about so there's a school in assam as well branch of dps so when they were in high school they they faced this 
obviously everybody knows this boys locker room talk they had to go through a lot of trauma they didn't have a space where they could actually you know claim that they were violated or they, they were abused or that something had happened to them you no know, teachers didn't actually listen to what they have to say so they came up with this space like we need this space we need to create a space and this is how safe space came into being for one and all I was not a part of that until this year, but I am so so glad to be a part of Safe Space as of now. Of course, no, that's, yeah. yeah, that's such a powerful story, and I'm I'm so glad that we all got to know each other. And um, you know, just sort of summing this up, it's like the three of us here, our teams, so many other people that we know who are working in this space. हम हर रोज काम करते हैं. We work very hard. to prove to everyone almost to prove to everyone that something is normal which is already normal like you said <laughs> something like puberty and hormones is already normal and we're literally working day in and out to be like yes it is normal right and um that in itself is something to think about right like the lack of space like you mentioned and um Okay. Other thing is, uh, is she frozen for you as well? <laughs> yes, yes. I think the internet connection. Don't be sad. Not my internet. No. Okay. Yeah. She's frozen again. Artika, be. Yeah. Yeah. Me? I'm just gonna like pick up because <laughs> I don't want our audience. <laughs> back. Yeah, she's back. <laughs> I said it has to happen to someone's internet. So <laughs> I will put my nazar. I'm sorry. Yes, please uh, do. I'm this person now, but I have done it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was. <laughs> um, yeah. So we were talking about space. So that, and of course, also like not having physically, not having the space. Like no, literally, like physical space also does not exist. Like there's no space to talk about. problems you're going through or just even discuss not even they don't even have to be problems they're just to discuss it um and you know of course you mentioned friends and family and teachers not being a place where we would share but you know what are your thoughts about friends like was that a space where you could share or that was also like selective sharing you know what was what was it like in that um space um friends are actually a, you know they can be very supportive when you talk about things because they are going to the same thing almost the same thing that we are in a in teenage you know they can relate to the things we are going through but then there also comes this factor of gender and sexuality if just, you are if you, you we don't know if like everybody i don't know as me myself when i was a kid i didn't know that people around me if they are queer or if they are heterosexual i had no idea about it because i myself didn't have enough information to think about myself or you know uh, relate my, to myself so i was very confused like do i talk to them how i feel will they actually listen to me or will they judge me there's this thing about you know you're afraid if you will be bullied in school and of course no none of the teenagers want to go through that if they can choose that so friends can be a good support group but then there are factors that you need to consider to keep yourself self, uh, like safe you don't want to you know come out beforehand if you don't feel safe or you might also risk you know being out to the entire school or maybe in getting informed to your parents like the word may go get out because teenagers they it's a huge thing like you talk yes. one thing and then it gets spread around the entire school that's a factor you need to think about and i am pretty sure that many of the teenagers in high school are youth the youth they do not approach their friends and listen until they entirely feel like this person is a safe space because they need to say like protect themselves at that age mm -hmm. yeah and you know like uh, i i read somewhere that people often with Queer folks and trans folks—they're like you're so mature for your age, and this is essentially like you need somewhere. The meme said <laughs> that <laughs> trauma. That's, that's, that is trauma. Yeah, mature at a at a young. Yeah. It's not a compliment. It's too much a compliment, is it? It's not yeah. a compliment. Like it is I because you 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 had to. Yeah. yeah. you had to go through the trauma you didn't choose to go through it you didn't have to you actually none of the kids should go through that but then you had to that is why you understand things better and it's not a compliment it's it's horrible that the kids have to go through that trauma yeah, yeah. right well said 
um another thing that came up when atika and i were sort of ideating on this on this whole piece right was we we do we talk about privilege and of course comes access to space like you said very rightly said sky um it, it is about you know how much power you have right and as a young person you are not allowed and and especially in a culture like ours you are infantilized till the day till the day you die almost right yeah. um, so 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 i think and and especially as you know folks with certain gender identities and sexual identities it's almost like you don't know what you want or you don't know what is good for you um of course it's important to acknowledge that but you know artika and i uh, shared with each other as to how uh, of course we came from like very privileged backgrounds right and i'll i'll talk about me specifically but that didn't mean i i, I always shared a room with my sibling uh, we, we were always well to do but i always shared a room with my sibling which meant that you know a certain kind of exploration was not possible um and and it's only when like okay everyone uh, at home has gone out or you know my my sibling is sleeping over at their friend's house is when i could actually find time to explore myself and and it's the a friend also you know shared with me as to how like you know when so she was at the tata institute of social sciences and how like you know she was sharing a dorm room with somebody she came from like a very privileged family but you're sharing a dorm room with someone um what are the boundaries there right um so so i think yeah it's it's interesting to like look at space as both you know a physical space and also as you know a space that we have with people and a space that we have with ourselves and um yeah what, what do you think about that uh, artika i know that like you had yeah. some opinions when we spoke about this yeah i mean like you mentioned about like honestly when we were growing up i we had such little understanding of things right like when we were in school um we didn't know anything honestly we only knew what teachers were teaching us which was often not well researched or not coming from a very informed place right um and i went to a residential school as well so i was there from age 10 to 18 which was basically my entire life right so the you know the age when you kind of hit puberty or when you feel like okay like when your brain is like okay maybe i should explore things um 8 months in a year we were sharing our physical space with uh, you know eight other people not just one other person eight other people where uh, you know even a scenario like oh when this one is out uh, of the dorm then we can have some personal space would never come up there was no concept of personal space really um and in this case they were our friends but then um and you know you could talk about everything you could talk about anything and everything but then there were some unspoken topics that we wouldn't talk about that i don't that i can't at all recall talking about and now now when i think about it i'm like why didn't why were we not talking about it but it was just not we just didn't understand it we we genuinely felt shame in discussing certain things mm-hmm. or if we speaking specifically of masturbation obviously all of us were going through the same age that time and it's impossible that nobody was wanting to explore right like that's humanly impossible right so even when we would hear stories about oh you know xyz was um xyz was masturbating or or when people would assume or you know kind of just say that oh we think this happened even then it would come out as gossip mm. you know and now i think of it and i'm like i'm just hurt for myself for having <laughs> thought that at that time yeah but yeah. we were all thinking the same thing nobody was saying anything if ever masturbation was discussed it was discussed in a you know downright derogatory manner where we were attaching so much shame to the person who we were discussing mm-hmm. um and of course now i can sit and say oh you know that that was horrible and i shouldn't have done it but um people who are probably in school are doing it right now because there's nobody telling them better i guess and yes now mm-hmm. they have the internet and they have some more space to understand mm-hmm. these things mm-hmm. but you know i can't say for sure that they're understanding it i just hope they are so mm. they don't go through this like we did mm. but yeah it was just to look back and think of it it's just um, it scares me honestly more than anything else no absolutely and like the fact that you know we went through that and we survived <laughs> that is just like shocking uh, we got lucky <laughs> yeah we did, we did. um guys so how are young people making space apart apart from the internet right like how how are you claiming I, I talk as though like I'm this old. I, I am pretty old. Um, <laughs> how are you feeling? <laughs> mm, when we talk about physical space, you know, 
that is a very debatable topic because we don't have space people in dorm rooms people in hostels people in you know living with their parents <laughs> because most of us are right like living in all like three of these conditions we don't have space whenever you you cannot talk about pleasure completely comfortably with your parents not everybody can if you can that is a very good space you are in and and, and it's a privilege of course but when I we talk about don't like you if you can talk to your parents <laughs> <laughs> i am jealous of you if you can <laughs> like i'm so jealous of you if you can do that yeah. um so that <laughs> mm, and you have to explore yourself in such a harsh harsh manner like you need to look for opportunities like okay this is the space where my parents are like busy or they're sleeping or they're not at home and with that comes this guilt you know you are exploring yourself and you're connecting it with some guilt you know my parents are not here so i can do this if they're here i will not be able to do this i will be scolded or I, you know it i will be shamed or slut shamed or whatever so when you attach pleasure and guilt together it makes a bad combination you will go through so much of trauma you will take time to unlearn that and i am not sure if everybody will be able to because from personal experience teenage when i used i i i remember when i explored myself and stuff when taking opportunities like obviously attaching guilt with pleasure i couldn't talk about it freely even with others you know i couldn't downright tell people that i explored myself and it was amazing for me but i cannot tell them because i thought this will be shamed on this will be like you know looked down on and it was like when people in school when they talked about pleasure uh, and i remember few of my friends who were actually very very brave and they did talk about pleasure and i am so grat- grateful that i knew them in school because i some part of me does you know credit them for being there for me like i could talk to them so they talked about pleasure and they were shame downright shamed and i i feel like just like uh, you said i i couldn't downright you know claim that i took their side or i supported them because even i was you know attaching pleasure to guilt so i felt guilty that i you know explored myself or i took part in self pleasure activities so when we talk about youth now considering i am almost a young adult you the, the teenage youth now i am pretty I'm sure they go through this thing I'm too about not infantilizing but i'm i'm old <laughs> y'all are not sorry <laughs> qualified i hear this often <laughs> that's fine i'm like the kid uh, like i'm i'm really young so everybody like whenever i talk to people i'm like the kid of the group so i'm i'm okay with that <laughs> yeah uh, so i have a cousin yeah, yeah i have a cousin like uh, juniors in school or cousins when i see the you know teenagers today they are active because they have more resources to explore they have more opportunities because they have other people you know they can talk to like be it me like my juniors if i talk about my juniors maybe i have given them some kind of space through my you know activities or through my activism some kind of you know space that they can come and talk to me so it's it's the resources if they're given enough resources and given enough support i think they can create spaces of their own where they can explore themselves that is very important that you need to be given you know resources and space and support obviously i love that i love what you just said i'm just going to quickly read out um, you know our dear friend karishma's uh, yeah. comment where he said i vehemently told someone once um girls don't masturbate i don't know anyone who does hard relate with their actually <laughs> have like claimed that i have never done it to people so fully fully relate and and they also point out how it's the stables the parks and the five escapes this is such an interesting uh, conversation right so so my my mentor pointed out to me how you know the first time she saw like couples so like in in, in mumbai you have you have this area called marine drive uh, everyone knows it uh, <laughs> and uh, you know you you'll often see like couples like canoodling and you'll see the engaging with each other in that space and uh, you know you, my mentor pointed out how like you know the first time that that they saw uh, do that they were like why don't these people just go home and do it right like why are they doing it in public but even if you wanted to rent a room for instance as an adult 
um you know you wanted to rent it with your partner even if it's even if you're in like a cis het passing relationship like that is such a task the you have money you have privilege even then uh it's going to be so difficult for you to you know make that space so which is when you you know obviously claim spaces and and you make those spaces yours um yeah yeah i i also know of like you know um roommates who like maybe they're sharing a space so there is this almost unspoken understanding that like they will be masturbating at some point right and and that's just that's just how no one talks about it uh but i just wish like that there was some space for you know a conversation saying we're sharing absolutely right like there's, there's yeah. no one else to go i may want just, to jump off at times like how do we make space for that yeah just like acknowledging each other's boundaries needs wants through conversation and honestly yeah. like is there another way to do it other than conversations <laughs> you know i mean i don't know of it yeah but um, yeah and, and like a conversation is the only difference between it becoming it going from disrespectful to becoming something that's respectful and that's you know acknowledging everybody's comfort zones as well i think in in case you're sharing a room with like a roommate or um mm-hmm. but again even to say that oh have a conversation takes so much like maybe it's easier for us to be like oh just have a conversation yeah 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 you know you never know where uh, one is sort of coming from in in that space um also, i just yeah i'm sorry sorry just going to quickly like uh, piggy back on that point and add that conversation is assuming that there are two willing parties wanting to engage yeah <laughs> exactly yeah 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 um yeah uh yeah any help you sky would love to hear like some of your perspectives in i mean health space for your perspective <laughs> that's actually a very good point you know when we talk about conversation it is to assume that two parties or the multiple parties are willing to take part in the conversation but what if they are not you never know what the other person is going through or the what the other person is coming from you know the space they're coming from or the space they have grown up in so it's a bit difficult you know tackle such situations and of course um, i don't think without conversation at some point we will have to converse you know at some point we will have to talk about things without talking about things obviously we do not have telepathy so people are not going to know but then also it's like you have to be sure that you are safe in that space before talking about it right but then this thing like right, you know an unsaid understanding i have noticed that you know between roommates or people who share rooms they have this unsaid understanding like they know that this is a time this person likes to not everybody but in few groups or in most of the groups they i have this understanding where they know that this certain person likes to have this kind of alone time for themselves doesn't matter what they do in it like if yeah. you want to explore or if you want to masturbate or if you want to just read a book or just dance you have this space but that works when there are lesser people sharing the room with a right. people sharing the same room that is not possible <laughs> but yeah. when i was staying over with my roommate we had this understanding like um we shared this part of time is yours you can take your time you can take your space and we will talk about it like okay i will be out for this this is time you know just take this time just explore or just you know sleep take a nap whatever you want to do so yeah. that is how it usually works yeah mm. can i point something out here it's it's um you know just kind of came to my mind as you were talking sky that um how to create the space for solo exploration or solo pleasure when we talk about masturbation we are saying there needs to be a you know a conversation or some sort of understanding but i have often noticed um you know when i was in college i have often noticed that people who had partners and when their partners would come over the whole flat would know how to behave <laughs> so they had full understanding yes. of how to behave if there's a partner but then that is so true it's about you then it's a little um, it's a little like you don't know what to do or the other person doesn't know what to do yeah. and kind of uh, also talks about the gap there is between partner you know between how people view partnered um partner sex pleasure. to solo sex yeah or pleasure with a partner or without a partner uh, i guess yeah yeah oh, I, right yeah. you know when when uh, even on a page right when we're talking about partnered sex when we're talking about even like uh, non normative partnered sex like when we're talking about kings and we're talking about all those things it is i feel like there's a lot less resistance to accept some of those pieces 
but when um, and and artika and i uh, and then you would also know this guy that whenever we try and have a conversation around you know self pleasure um there is a lot of resistance and there are a lot of people uh, commenting and saying how <laughs> be addictive and it is wrong and it is this and it is that so um yeah it, it, it's very evident even in this small like bubble of ours uh, yeah folk bubble of ours it's still <laughs> like still very jarring to to see that difference yeah right yeah yeah so like um partner sex is like you know passable like this is we can you know society is evolving up till the point that we accept a cis het couple maybe that is also very you know probable we might we might not making out in public we oh, might wow. because they are cis het yeah. in class then okay yeah right, right. <laughs> but, but then the, you cannot do that the man and the woman is shorter than the man and the woman is fat <laughs> all the boxes calm circles and you are doing it for procreation we will <laughs> Oh my god that's so true like why is it passable why is it a bit acceptable because they are going to procreate they are going to reproduce which is why this is actually kind of some kind of you know acceptable but the queer couples or you know self pleasure you know pleasure is something you do not need to take part in because sex is only supposed to be reproductive you know you're supposed to you know produce the next generation <laughs> and sex with yourselves it's just a taboo it's a myth and nobody takes part in it people have actually have this thinking and yet when we talk about you know obviously you guys know because you guys do create content around the same thing when we talk about self pleasure uh, we have had experiences where people would come up to us and you know text us just say that my partner is asexual how do i treat them so that they are interested in having sex with me something like that and it was very triggering and disturbing um couples heterosexual couples you know they are still in a position where they are not entirely accepted by the society like unmarried couples and for the other people like self pleasure and for people queer couples it's still like we have a long long way to go mm-hmm. yeah yeah right yeah um but i mean i'm also like wondering yes it sucks right and uh, yes this is very much the reality and uh, not 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 to be the kind of person who tries to find the silver lining but i think it's just like extremely empowering for me when i claim this space on the internet right as as a as a queer woman um who's who's also like exploring her own gender identity and uh, you know i i claim this space and i'm like okay you know what we're going we're going to talk about sex cuz i want to talk about sex um and if you if you don't if, if you're going to say something extremely insensitive to me i will block you and i will block all future accounts <laughs> i think like so it's such a power trip for me <laughs> to to be able to claim that space um and and since we are talking about spaces i thought i just uh, yeah hold space for that sorry i will stop with this <laughs> but yeah do you do you both since both of you also you know are trying to foster and do, do you also feel like this is almost you like reclaiming you know what your narrative is supposed to be yeah i mean i have a thought and a question for uh, both of you actually you know talking about uh, spaces or creating the space or you know we here are saying we have created a space not just for ourselves but also for so many people who come and interact with us uh, whether it's through our content or you know actually who you know some people who do send us nice dms as well um all of that included but you know like sky said you you just come into college from school and we did the transition a few years back so a decade, i think sorry sorry a decade ago stop you were six years <laughs> <laughs> but yeah basically coming from school where where it was like living in in a shell and how like no information was coming in we were trying to get any information to coming to college you know learning a bit at least about yourself and a little bit uh, you know outside of yourself and you know just building very basic understanding of things for me at least and then in college where you maybe feel like okay now i have some sort of space but that being met with people shaming you because that happens also right like um like i remember being in college and like if anybody who knew me in college is here 
I was with like a bunch of toxic people. <laughs> you know, everybody was doing everything, but then they were also like talking uh, negatively about you or you know shaming you for something that they probably were doing themselves as well. So it's it's like a lot of barriers. Like you said, definitely heterosexual couples have it easier. um but you know it's there's so many barriers in place and like how do you deal with that you know what do, what is what is one supposed to do about those and um not asking as somebody who's gone through it i wish i hadn't gone through it but just more so for maybe somebody who's listening to us right now about this someone who's feeling that their space is being violated or they have the space but they're still being met with some sort of attack from the outside you know what are your thoughts on that um so uh I think that this has so much to do with an individual's perspective of why pleasure is wrong or why exploring yourself is wrong like I know we are you know made into thinking that way but in one can you know question themselves like if you're starting somewhere we can start by questioning why is it wrong why is it that you know us actually you know you're like recommending descent and all what is this nonsense guy that you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> you're asking people to think kind kind of thing sexuality is cancelled yeah <laughs> yeah we can all go home now we yeah, have done <laughs> mm, okay um, so what are you saying that yeah uh, sorry i just got a brain fog i'm so That's sorry okay. I'm like the I right? Like they would just cancel Instagram like a few days. I was like, no, we must descend. We must. We want this. Uh, yeah. So you know, a lot of thinking comes from our cultural backgrounds, like how we are brought up and what kind of you know religious beliefs that our parents, you know. Uh, teach us things like that, so we can start by exploring those. Like, why is it wrong? Why do we think that? Why do we think that exploring ourselves is wrong when we are not hurting anybody or we are not harming ourselves even? Why is it wrong? We can ask questions. What I remember doing in high school was that not directly to my teachers, of course, not them, but I used to ask questions like amongst my friends when I wanted to, you know, start a conversation. Like, do you guys do this? Like, do you guys masturbate? and and somebody would be like no i don't i don't think this is right and why is that it does it, uh, like did you learn that somewhere did our books mention somewhere that do like our teachers tell us that we because teachers actually never mentioned pleasure or masturbation or anything so teachers didn't talk about it so i used to take that as an advantage did our teacher tell us that this is wrong and they would be like no then how do you know so that this is wrong you will never know if you never try it and that is how i used to i remember you know starting were like the OG influencer before like Instagram was a thing. I'm just thinking that's such a smart way to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. No. So that is what I did. And um, uh, can you just remind me what we are talking about? Sorry. You know, my ADHD is like uh, we talk about something and I. Interrupting. I will shut my big mouth. But you were essentially saying. how you know you would ask your friends did your teach did our teachers actually say that self pleasure is bad Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that. And then I would come back and you know ask my grandmother because uh, actually I'm an orphan. I used to talk to my grandmother. Like, uh, what were your experiences? What were your experiences growing up? You know, uh, like, did you guys do this? But my grandmother, obviously, we I didn't expect the kind of reaction that she gave. Like, she obviously shushed me up. Like, this is not what you're supposed to talk about. This is, you know, you're still too young to talk about this. You'll know when you grow up. That is what they taught me. And but then, obviously, then I resorted to internet, which was the only possible way. But in internet, we didn't have. Instagram back then we didn't have actual spaces uh, you know where i can get correct information so pornography or you know wikipedia those are not at all you know uh, what do i say credible sources but that was what i had and i made use of it didn't get entirely correct didn't get it entirely correct or i correct for many many years but then i kept it exploring and then i would go up to my friends you know i'll tell them this is what i found yesterday you know and they would be like what 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 
even though they knew that they had this guilt and shame you like oh, we shouldn't talk about it but in curiosity teenage curiosity what did you find what did you read how was it and i would say you go and google this you might also find this you know just go and read that is how i came up with this stuff oh that's so that's so nice of you to share that and yeah, i'm I, just like so smart yeah. <laughs> i don't know what we were doing yeah right i i, I even i didn't know what i was doing yeah. also like i was one of those kids who would would say that i did a lot of things but i didn't really do nothing uh. <laughs> but in college it's very different though <laughs> in college like everybody has already overcome that teenage thing and they and they know even though they have attached guilt to self pleasure they obviously I'll, masturbate most of the people do right. and it's in my law school i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> so we just you know yeah sorry right. please yeah no no i was just saying that Uh, in college is different because people know what they are talking about even though they do not want to talk about it freely but they, they still know that what we are talking about so it it's not a very hush hush kind of uh, conversation mm-hmm. that goes in college but then it's more acceptable because we have all overcome that you know sense of you know guilt maybe somewhere we are relearning and together when you form a circle and talk about your own experiences uh, the shame it kinds of you know you relearn to you know leave it behind slowly step by step of course but then it happens mm-hmm. yeah yeah i also like uh, dr uv's comment about how you know it, it it's sort of also like i mean this is an unrealistic expectation at times but i think this generation must do the self work that is required in order to not pass on that intergenerational trauma right right like, those of us who have the privilege those of us who are able to i feel like there is there is some responsibility on us as well uh, to to ensure that we don't regurgitate regurgitate the uh, yeah and and someone says we used to talk in truth or dare yeah definitely and also absolutely like, i'm sorry those orkut stories those orkut like uh, uh, erotica stories that people write about their self experiences like hit me in the like drop a emoji in the comment if like that was also your sexual awakening or maybe i'm just too old yeah no we what no, bad I, i used I, to do what bad stories as well what bad <laughs> and i think there was Fan something fix. called omegle which we had no idea about ah! what it was we had just heard from people and we'd be like oh sleep over let's check out yeah okay. omegle <laughs> also like young kids right when they're playing ghar ghar right what are they trying to do they're essentially <laughs> trying to like explore the, that's that's when the curiosity starts about like bodies and you right. know other folks um there's also someone who says there's so much shame the board says there's so much shame associated for no reason that even well educated open minded people feel guilty that they can't even spend more than 10 minutes even if they try to pleasure themselves yeah true true yeah yeah i even think that's such an important point about uh video oh god yeah yahoo chat is well. true <laughs> no that's such an important point about like equating the value of your time when it comes to self pleasure like you literally binge watch one entire series the whole night give up your sleep for it but when it comes to something like self pleasure or even self care other than pleasure like outside of pleasure other things it's it's a whole thing that oh my god like i spent an hour on like something today whatever it may be so yeah, yeah, yeah that's another thing that kind of i think is a barrier uh, you know yeah. apart from everything else that we also touched yeah. on to the the time yeah. factor yeah you you both know what flames is Yes, yes, that cross, cross thing. I don't want to cross the name. <laughs> Doctor, you be pointed out. Dude, I remember like reading the word uh, "sex" in the dictionary and being just like so excited. Like we would all act. Dictionary was a thing, okay. <laughs> I did yeah. that too. I not that word, but then I did that with different other words. Like dictionary was the source we had. I still remember in the, middle school. Absolutely, I remember Sorry. the friend who taught me the word "fuck," and like I, I was ten, and I, thinking that oh my god, this is the worst thing. Like, why have we learned this? And in my school, 
any times any time anybody spoke about sex or you know like even learned these words people would be like oh she's corrupting you so it would like someone would be like oh who corrupted you so basically what that meant was somebody told you what boobs were or somebody told you what fuck meant or somebody told you some other uh, slang and then so, they'd be like oh xyz is corrupting you I'm my life now and what all of us are doing <laughs> our lives now for free <laughs> is corrupting people basically yeah i mean i did it for it out to us on and off in comments like you're corrupting people yeah 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 i'm sorry sky you were saying Uh, no, I don't know. Like, uh, have you guys faced cancel culture in school? Because uh, when I talk, or, like, when I remember, like, when we found out, like, back in school, when somebody, the group of friends, we find out that this person, you know, likes to masturbate, or this person knows what sex is, or this person knows slangs. There was this cancel culture where the entire group would, you know, boycott that person. They would not talk to them. they would like shame them not entirely like verbally shame them but then they would like psychologically shame them like distance themselves and we would not eat like sit with you or eat with you or talk with you because you know corrupt so there was this cancel culture that teenagers took part in back in my school which was obviously toxic and bullying like kind of yeah. bullying it is bullying someone into shaming themselves like even if that person is not a shame work what they did because they should not be their group of friends they you know people of the same age make them think that they did something wrong yeah yeah and like lisa pointed out that you know as as our friend karishma said it it is it all stems from purity culture somehow your worth is attached to uh, your modesty um or you right. know just your pure if you you save yourself and i mean again like not to shame someone who wants to right not to right totally a choice but that's not the default or that does not somehow make you morally superior um than than other folks yeah i think we, with everything we say um you know the three of us here plus some of our other friends we keep circling back to the same point which is that the idea is to have the choice to do what you want to do right it's not to say oh this is wrong this is right um with certain things okay here is the scientific like evidence or information or whatever we have access to but even beyond that information it is still a person's choice um mm. and nobody should be shamed for picking up you know whichever way they do pick up uh, at the end of the day but um, yeah i mean right now that's not the case for sure <laughs> yeah right yeah i'm i'm so glad that you know the three of us came together and and we have this conversation and uh, yeah i'd love to actually just hear like one final parting message for the youth of this nation from from, from the <laughs> before we before we call it a night can we give a message to the youth we can have a message to the youths of the nation okay i <laughs> you yeah, can before we end can we just ask that i am i'm genuinely interested in knowing and um, if anybody in the audience in in the audience wants to share also so the question was what is your first memory because this conversation was about spaces right physical spaces as well so what is your first memory of uh, hearing about or seeing masturbation and what was the space associated with it and the reason i'm asking that is because for me for the longest time that was the space i associated with it in my real life as well like i thought wahi pe karte hain for example so if anybody in the audience has anything to say for this and of course aprupa and sky your answers as well i'm i'm very interested to know if it was my broken childhood or we were all going through the same thing do no, i really um, that because i just thought it was something that you do under the covers like till very recently i didn't know it was a choice to like for instance even have you know clothes off right or to not use not be under the covers or like to have the you don't have to have the light off like i didn't know yeah <laughs> no right because i was also teaching folks about this but i'd internalized it so much that for me it's always something that's done in the dark and something that's always like you know done under the covers bye right. um me i remember you know talking about it in school like uh, one of my friend as i told you like one one of my friends she was very vocal about things and she once told me about this word masturbation and i was like really and i was very small back then like uh, i think i was 
so i had no idea because i didn't have any resources so she was the one who told me and then there was a sudden rush like i was so excited to learn about it like what is this thing our bodies can do this we can have orgasms and they are if if they are as amazing as you you know make them sound and there is something i need to do with myself i need to explore myself but of course i didn't do it right back then like i was interested but then there was like questions like uh myths of course we have the heard so many of the myths like you're going to become you know you're going to lose your purity or you're going to you know get acne over your face the myths attached to the normal thing so i actually refrained from doing that until many many years hmm hmm right yeah yes. the space of like shame and like you know guilt and not something that you must try and you know for sure uh, since yeah. you asked this question you better have like a very interesting hilarious answer atika it's i mean do you find me funny generally <laughs> i do <laughs> it's it's so it's it is funny it is funny to me now and i hope it's funny to you but that wasn't the purpose of it i watched a movie when i was young i, I honestly don't remember how old i was it's called ishq wish i don't know if you've seen it it's got jayat kapoor in it and he's just constantly i studied i studied archaeology in college i'm going to tell you why i said that so in the movie he's just constantly shown to be in the bathroom with a magazine and he's just making all these noises and and i just couldn't understand what's happening or what he's doing in the bathroom so basically when i later learned about it that was the first connect that my mind made my mind was like oh he must be masturbating in the bathroom so for me that was like i was like oh everybody must be doing it in the bathroom so for me it was like oh you pee in the bathroom you masturbate in the bathroom and you shit in the bathroom and you bathe in the bathroom it was like a set thing for me for the longest time ever and the second thing was the same movie i think they want to watch porn or something and like back then like cable tv so it's coming and the friend says oh raji it's coming at so and so time on so and so channel and then he wants to hide it from his parents so he just says uh, so his father comes and he's just like oh there's a film about harappa and mohenjodaro so for the longest time i was like what is the deal with harappa and mohenjodaro and my little like baby brain was like Harappa and Mohenjo-daro must be something like sexual. <laughs> I just genuinely believed in it <laughs> for the longest time. So thank you to Shahid Kapoor, I guess. <laughs> so it took me actually a long time to disconnect the physical space from the act. You know, even though like I later on knew that it wasn't compulsory to go masturbate in your bathroom only. Um, and you know at even even in the times when i did have other spaces to use it was just such a i don't know it was i was conditioned to think that mm. so yeah it's it's funny and sad and stuff <laughs> mm someone commented saying praise so that next birth you get a beautiful face okay which one is this too all three of us yeah yeah no no <laughs> Bye. I'm so Bye. glad it was said on this chat because I know Karishma is here and Aparupa is here and then I would have had to share it with them separately. So thank yeah. you <laughs> for saying it here and just getting it out. Yeah, and I think it's actually like a really interesting note for us to wrap up this conversation as well, right? Taking space and creating space for us also comes at a cost. um and the repercussions are often like ridicule and and reducing you to like your least interesting feature and then saying that you don't have it so you're somehow not worthy um so yeah so i think i think that's that's an interesting note for us to end the conversation and <laughs> have a message for the youth i'm really trying to extract this maybe sky can give a message for the youth um my message would be that <laughs> listen to such people because they make really really interesting points that we cannot overlook we need to listen to them because they have opinions everybody needs to listen everybody's opinions of course uh but then uh, keeping jokes aside uh i think when we talk about spaces the entire like the ending that i came up, come up with whenever talking about it with my friends or my peers or my you know people i trust is that if you have the privilege or if you have the privilege or resources to create a space you need to share it like you cannot gate keep spaces you need to you know if you have it you need to give it to others so that they can create their own spaces 
and they can explore themselves be it physical or be it, you know um, theoretical like if i am talking about space giving people space i need to give my sister or my cousin or my sibling the space to explore themselves because we need to be open and you know we need to be we need to make them feel that they can come up to us with their questions whenever they want to i am not that old but then i do have siblings and and i try that you know if i have resources i come up with your post informative post and stuff i directly send them they're on instagram and i'm like read this i'm pretty sure you will understand something from this and you will you know explore yourself i'll leave you to it and if you have any questions i'm always here so that is the thing we can do yeah yeah i love that They're like the big sibling we all deserved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Small uh, big sibling. What about? Yeah, I am. Aprupa, what is your message for the youth? My message for the youth <laughs> for another life, life today. Let's stay here also. Live, love, laugh. Okay. Really, I. I I watched. Yeah. Even so I did. People who have this up in their. uh rooms and like you know who who have this up as their status but don't we all want it don't yeah. you all want this <laughs> so yeah yes so ridiculous okay live love <laughs> no that's that's so true i think it's so funny because this would be my message even if we hadn't got that comment right now but um just be kind i feel like there are already so many barriers in um you know literally just creating an identity for yourself not even for yourself to share it with the whole world but just even understanding it for yourself and then there are people who um i don't know why are not kind i'm sure there are some reasons and you know i won't speak of them because i don't know but just be kind i mean that's you know that's a way you can support somebody in you know whatever they're going through um and it comes at no cost so it's just so i don't know why people aren't <laughs> just get to you now ask Yeah, yeah. Hold space for yeah. Hold just <laughs> space for uh, that uh, is different from from you know your your thoughts. Yeah, essentially. Okay, awesome. Uh, we said this would be a half an hour conversation. <laughs> that, like, for we think it's fine. It's about us. We have been yeah. made. Uh, yeah, it has been so amazing. I'm glad it like went over half an hour. <laughs> Uh, so grateful to our uh, audience members who stayed with us and who contributed in the comments. I'm so 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 grateful to our special guest today, Sky, um, who was kind enough to you know not just share uh, their valuable experience and you know knowledge, but also like drew very heavily from their lived experience to uh, speak about such important topics. And yeah, definitely the the elder sibling that we all deserved. right <laughs> yeah thank, thank you, you so much for having me here though like yeah. um thank you for giving us the space when we are talking about spaces so this is a space <laughs> that you created with your resources and i'm so glad that we we are sharing it and yeah. you know i'm really glad that we had this conversation yeah yeah, yeah. yeah me too thank you okay I'm... thank you so much leave that comment thank now thank you on... <laughs> So yeah, I think I think before we close, we just say that we'll come back next week and and we try to make sense of another thing. So I hope you all join us next week as well. And yeah, thank you so much for being here, both of you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Bye bye. Good night. Bye. Good night.